caught COVID or had a COVID jab, you can now top up with a free COVID-19 booster. It helps keep you and your mob protected from serious illness from COVID-19. So talk to your doctor or health worker about a free COVID-19 booster or visit health.gov.au forward slash top up to find out more. Authorised by the Australian Government, Camera. Let's face it, there's nothing special about a night in with chips. Nothing special about crisp golden potato. The warmth, the smell. Nothing special about the... The salt, the sauce, the sound. Eating off the tray. Oh. Dropping the tray. The five second rule. Having the last chip and nobly giving it away. Nothing special about McCain pub style chips. <laughs> Beat the differ. It's end of financial year at Spartan Appliances. Don't miss our genuine savings on big brands like AEG, Electrolux, Fisher & Paykel, Smeg and more. A new dryer to handle those winter loads. A new barbecue in time for summer. Or a kitchen reno to enjoy for years to come. It's all at Spartan Appliances and it's all part of our brilliant end of financial year deals. On sale now. Open seven days in Campbelltown and Torrensville. Spartan, the appliance people. Hi, I'm Peter Berkowitz from Berkowitz Furniture. When winter comes, there's nothing quite like enjoying time at home. To make home more comfortable and more stylish, the less at the Berkowitz Winter Style Sale. You'll save up to 40% with heavily reduced end-of-season models. There's special pricing on all new orders too. With beautiful Australian furniture, you can customise to your own impeccable style. Don't miss the final week of the Winter Style Sale at Berkowitz. We're a furniture family. Marland Homemaker Centre. On 1395 Adelaide's 5AA, this is the 5AA Fishing Show. Presented by Ned McHenry. 29 minutes to 7 o'clock. Welcome along to the Fishing Show on 5AA. All thanks to TJM. If you're four-wheel driving and you want to get there, you want to be TJM equipped, head out there to Nailsworth and Clavelli Park. Sam Tugwell alongside the great Ned McHenry, who's been nicknamed the Effervescence in the last few days. I don't even know what that means. I thought it was the... Roey said the squid jag, and now it's the effervescence. <laughs> what is that? I don't know where it came from. He, he sort of said if you shake up a bottle and then you open up the lid and then <laughs> just sort of bubbles everywhere, he thinks that's you when I you like come the off the bench. fishing-related stuff. Is there something fishing-related that's similar to that or not really? I don't know if there's a fishing-related version of effervescence, but nonetheless, that's <laughs> been the uh, the new <laughs> nickname that he's gone for. Hey, um, well done on the weekend. Great to uh, see you back here in the studio. We've got a massive show coming up. Massive show. Today's the day, Sammy. We joked about it last week, but hang on. Can we do some celebrations, please? <laughs> Good. What day is it today? It is the National 5AA Fishing Show today. Yes! Come we on. We made it happen. So for context, someone's listening, driving in their car, thinking, what the heck are these people talking about? <laughs> we have a joke, don't we, at the start of shows. We yep. say it's National Day today. So for example, today is National Bingo Day. Is it? Today is National Sunglass Day. What? Kind of makes sense. Or well, get your polarised on for fishing, Sammy. Still, so it kind of makes sense. Yeah, okay, fair so enough. So we said, why can't we have our fishing show day today? <laughs> and we've done it. So, so this is it. Tuesday's the day. This is going to be our day from now on. Um, what's the date today? It is the, oh goodness, so 20, 27th. 27th of June. So that's our day from, from here, Sammy. Can't wait. We're going to do the fishing year. show. We've got a cracking prize. We've got a great guest. So it's a big show ahead. Looking forward to it. Looking forward to your hot spots as well. And we're going to have a few stories to share very shortly as well, which I can't wait for. Absolutely. It's been tough with the hot spots. We'll get to those after the break. I've got a few really good ones. But mm. the weather's just been so crap, it's made it really tricky to get out. And it's also been hard to get information because people just haven't been fishing as much. Right. So you haven't been able to get out in the water then? As I said, I've been doing a lot of land based stuff which has been awesome i'm looking at thursday with okay. uh great intense i mean i'm hoping to get out but the weather still isn't great there's strong mm. kind of southwesterlies predicted um some good tide around so i reckon if you can get out locally these whiting will go okay wind with the flood tide potentially might work there's a mm. meter of tide on the side so i'd love to get out but it's just this bloody weather it's doing everyone's head in so thursday is it good weather or not well, it's okay. okay. The wind looks okay. It might be fishable, but it's not going to be calm. But it's like, not going to be the best nah, of weather. It's going to be 15 knots. It's, it's oh. going to blow. It's going to be crap. So have you had any disasters happen before on a bad weather day? Oh, my God, Sammy. Speaking of bad weather, <laughs> it's a fishing It's a fishing thing, actually. I'd love to hear from our audience because, yes. God, there's some funny stories. I mean, this is, this is a shocker. This is not a responsible oh, story, but this is a fuel story. I filled up my boat, only put about 50 or 60 litres in and went tuna fishing one day. Yeah. 
Next thing I know, the weather's come up, so the swell and the wind. And I did the last 10 Ks coming into Victor Harbour with zero on my fuel You're gauge. you Purely because I just didn't predict that the wind came out. <laughs> Do you know how irresponsible that is? That's, That's absolutely so... horrific. Wow. There's so often you look at the wind and you think, oh, it might be all right, we'll go out, and it ends up being tragic. I wonder if our audience has had the same thing. I mean, we could God. even... We've got a bit of a prize today. Yeah. I can give away a prize. What can, Are you happy to share what the prize is? I've got... Well, I went into Adelaide Tucker World Metro. They're, of mm. course, a beautiful sponsor of the show. We love them dearly. Yep. A Shimano Revolution rod, a 10-footer, a nice. Shimano Alivia uh, reel to match with that. So that's a surf combo, Sammy. Wow, good. Imagine yourself flicking nice little medals off yeah. the beach for salmon. You might be chasing some whiting on bait off the beach. Perfect outfit for that. It's valued at 300 bucks. They've got a sale on at the moment, 199 I went in and wow. stole one. I actually paid for it. Uh, went, in, went, went in and grabbed that. <laughs> I've, I've, got it as a, I've got it as a gift, Sammy. You just want to give it away tonight. I'm going to give it away. I want to hear someone's story with weather. Have they ever gone out and had an absolute mare? Has it been too rough? Has there been <laughs> has there been waves coming over the bow? It's a two hundred dollars surf outfit uh, to give away today on the show, Sammy, for someone who's had an absolute mare with weather. Eight double two three double O double O. Jump on the line. Let's have some fun on this program for uh, National Five Double A Fishing Show Today's Day. Today's the day, Sammy. It's an exciting show. It if, is. If we can't get out at the moment because the weather's so crap, we might as well have a laugh about it. But but we've got a cracking guest who has been out and might have some info. Indy Thompson uh, is the is the lady I speak of, and she's huge in the fishing industry. Thank you for joining, Cindy. Hi, thank you so much for having me. I saw you were on the line then, so you had to listen to our dribble for five minutes. So I apologise <laughs> for that. But hey, you're based out of Tasmania, but you fish right around the country. Have you had some some better weather than us? Have you been able to get out? I, I'm absolutely familiar with the crap weather that you're talking about. <laughs> and, um, luckily for us, we and our fish are incredibly close to home. So it's not too far if we do encounter bad weather in Tassie, but I do a lot of fishing around Australia and I prefer to be near a reef where I do have a bit of shelter, <laughs> but I've used I'm used to the crap weather at home, that's for sure. So I came from Victoria originally. I moved over here, obviously, for, for work, for footy and stuff. I reckon the weather is pretty crap here in South Australia. It's very crap in Victoria, but <laughs> it sounds incredibly crap in Tasmania. Is that fair, Indy, or not? That is absolutely fair. Throw in penguins with that as well. <laughs> not, only, not only do we get wind, but we get cold. And when you're looking at your rod tips and they're frosted over and you're literally picking the frost off your oh. rod tip while you're fishing... It's, it's not pleasant. It's just not pleasant. Hey, you do get out fishing a lot, and it's awesome to see because you are a female, obviously, and I reckon fishing mostly we think about as a bit more of a male type of sport, but females in fishing, is it's huge now. It's so popular. Talk us just a little bit about the growth um, that you've seen in that space. Yeah, look, it's, it's absolutely amazing. For me, I didn't have an option as to whether I would like fishing or love fishing. I grew up fishing with my mum and dad, and they actually met in the industry. So it was second nature. I came out of the womb and straight onto a boat and I've never looked back. But when I first started fishing, there weren't a lot of women in the industry. Uh, I was few and far between, between basically. So uh, looking at it grow and watching a lot of women out there getting involved is, is great to see. And I think all we can do is just not forget about the wives, daughters, sisters. And if you're going out, make sure you ask if they want to come along because you never know. It could spark a very expensive interest. <laughs> well, you can say that again. Hey, how body well said. And, Sammy, Indy is fishing seriously. Now, she's mm -hmm. not like every Joe Blow like myself catching Tommies off the pier. You've caught some amazing fish, Indy. Is there any that stand out, like swordfish, huge southern bluefin tuna? What stands out as an epic capture? Oh, that's tough. I, I love all fish, but I have a fence dance for large ones. So I would have to say, probably for me, I can't look past the marlin. And that's purely just... Speed. I think a swordfish is like a tractor and a marlin is like a Ferrari. <laughs> yep. So it depends on what you need for the job. Um, but it, yeah, I would have to say a giant black marlin is as good as it gets. Oh, well done. And where did you get that up on the Great Barrier Reef? Yeah, up on the GBR, on a lure actually too. Usually they're bait fishing up there, but we didn't have any luck on bait for a few days and thought we'll throw a lure out and... Yeah, got a 650, 700-pound black marlin. How good. Hey, not marlin, but speaking of the tuna, you're involved in a great program called Tuna Champions. Talk us through that a little bit, mainly around actually respecting your catch, making sure if you are going to keep fish, uh, you're putting the right things in place to make sure the quality's there because we've seen a great recovery of that species, haven't we? Oh, absolutely. Um, I'm the project manager for Tuna Champions and I take pride in trying to encourage anglers to be accountable for their catch, basically. So 
we're catching this beautiful fish. They're unique because they're able to heat their body, which a lot of other fish, most fish, can't do. So uh, my role is to fly around Australia and encourage wreck anglers and give them the tools to be able to take care of their catch. And that's simple things like right from making sure your hands are wet, following icky processes and releasing, minimising that time on board, so releasing that fish as quickly as you possibly can. But it's the little things that make a big difference. And back when this program started, bluefin tuna were on the brink, basically, and very tough to come by. All of a sudden, the, the stock has come back, and now they're incredibly accessible, which is amazing to see. I was recently in Victor Harbour, and they caught hundreds of fish over two days in a tournament there. Yep. So just to see the sheer amount of fish that have come back, I think it's our responsibility to make sure we take care of them and make sure that that, that improves for the future. Well said. How can we follow some of the, the journey with tuna champions and, and your fishing too? Because you're right around the state basically covering that species. Like, How can we follow you and your journey with that? Yeah, I basically follow the bait like the tuna do. <laughs> so wherever the tuna are is where I am. You think you just migrate that. around with them? What, do you I, swim I, or I, do I, you... I reckon I do more miles. I'm confident I do more miles. <laughs> Um, yeah, no, look, head over to our Facebook and Instagram, follow us, like, share, tag us in everything that you're doing, and we put up some educational videos, instructional pamphlets, things like that, also yep. talk nights, so stay involved and have those conversations with your mates down at the pub at how we can all be a little bit better, because that's where the change really happens. I've learnt tons through that program, Sammy, about how to make sure you're looking after that tuna well, because if you are going to keep them, it is critical you do so properly. Our guest, Indy Thompson, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Good luck, Fatline. How good is that? Indy Thompson. She's a superstar, and you can see how much she loves fishing. And Absolutely she's an absolute pro. loves it. Absolutely loves it. More females in fishing, it's happening. Yeah. Uh, we see it with the, oh, I forget, they're in the tuna. They won the tuna competition at Port Lincoln, Sammy. Wow. It was a full female crew. That's Sensational. So good. Smoked all the fellas, as they do. But um, I think it's becoming more and more popular. It's such a good pastime, but only when the weather is good and we can bloody get out there, that's for sure. So for those who have a story about bad weather experiences on the boat, disasters, whatnot, 8223 0000. We're going to take a quick break, come back with all your calls, and Nettie's going to give away uh, that kit that we it's have. It's a good price, Sammy. Fantastic. 300 bucks of value for a surf rod and reel. So we might even throw in a couple of lures from the crew at Adelaide Tucker World oh, Metro. They've got a good nice. sale on at the moment. Moment, you can go in there, pick it up, and get yourself surfed. How fishing. much did you steal? Oh, Eight double two three double I just walked <laughs> straight out. No, I shouldn't say that. <laughs> they love you down there. Let's take your calls next. Hello, Frank Walker from National Tiles. During these times of high interest rates and inflation, National Tiles is bending over backwards to help our customers save money on their tiles. Yes, National Tiles is checking and locking prices on many of our popular wall and floor tiles at more than 20% below the market every day of the year. That's right, National Tiles are checking and locking prices on many of our popular tiles at more than 20% below the market every day of the year. This month, all kids 14 and under get to go to the footy for free. What about that? That's all games between round 16 and 19 of the 2023 Toyota AFL Premiership season. From selfies to screamers and tasty treats. Spectacular! Make it an awesome day for the family with a day out at the footy. Kids go free round 16 to 19. Oh, yeah. oh, well, we. Go to afl.com.au slash kidsmonth. Terms and conditions apply. Subject to capacity and availability. Solar Heart has been helping smart Aussies turn sunshine into hot water for 70 years. From our reliable rooftop models to sleek split systems and smart tanks that talk to your solar panels. No one knows more about solar hot water than Solar Heart. And right now, you'll get a $500 trade-in when you upgrade to one of Solar Heart's energy-saving water heaters. So if you want to lower your energy bills and your emissions, get smart, get Solar Heart. Terms and conditions apply. Go Vita, your local health food shops. Over 30 years health and wellness experience and over 300 natural health practitioners specialising in you. Hi, I'm Ali from Go Vita Marion and Colonnades. This month we have a great offer on NutriVital Age Black Garlic One a Day Odorless Capsules. Save 37% off recommended retail price with 30 capsules, now $11.95. Follow directions for use. Go Vita, Colonnades, Fairview Green, Marion, Mount Barker, Manopara, Semaphore, and Tanunda. Hi, I'm Jo. I'm a registered nurse and I work with St Louis Home Care as a clinical care coordinator. St Louis was started by my great-grandmother and is one big happy family with lovely staff just like Jo. 
people that work for St Louis are very loving and caring. Whether it's personal care, preparing meals, shopping, home maintenance or social activities, we help people stay at home for longer. If you're interested, come and join us. Google St Louis Home Care today. Hi, Phil Hoffman from Phil Hoffman Travel. We are proudly South Australian and family owned. For over 30 years, we have lived and breathed travel, connecting South Australians to the world using our experience, expertise and genuine care, leaving no stone unturned to provide the best value, service and experience. We aim to create memories that last a lifetime. With nine locations across South Australia, whether you're travelling for pleasure, business, group travel, conferences or events, our team at Phil Hoffman Travel has you covered. Visit phd.com.au On 1395 Adelaide's 5AA this is the 5AA Fishing Show presented by Ned McHenry 15 minutes to 7 we'll get these hot spots very shortly for Tackle World Adelaide 8223 we're asking bad weather situations on the boat have you had any? Today's the day Sammy it's National 5AA Fishing Show Day and we're talking crap weather because I haven't been out for a while, it's all been land based stuff, smashed the squid, hoping to get out this Thursday. Weather's the one thing, if we could get that bloody thing in order, we'd be out a lot more often. Steve from Gawa, a boating experience in crappy weather, my friend? Yeah, I have, Dad, yeah, I uh, lived in Darwin for 10 years, and uh, I've, I've just retired today, actually. Oh, and oh congratulations! Just... Hey, it's a good day <laughs> for all of us! Yes, yeah, so I'll be out there fishing a bit more, I hope. Um, in Darwin, when I lived there, we, we went over the other side of the harbour, and on the way back, there's massive storm come up, and we're in something like a... My brother-in-law's boat, it was a, a mark and whaler or a shark cat, luckily. Yep, yep. And I had my son sitting on my lap, and I was convincing him that everything was all right, but I was you know whatting. <laughs> um, and we're going up, up and down 10 to, 10 to 15 foot waves. Wow. And it took us twice as long to get back to the other side of the harbour as what it did to take a, get over there. Oh. So that was my worst experience. Um, and you can see the, see the storms coming over in Darwin, but this was massive. That sounds so, epic, Steve. It's amazing. You can feel like you're in a big boat at the boat ramp, but as soon as that weather come up, comes up, the boat starts getting smaller and smaller, doesn't it? Oh, it does, yeah. The, the seas were massive and the boat was, yeah, like you say, ended up so small. Oh, well done. Hey, Steve, how bloody good about retirement? Well done. Yeah, it's good. We'll see, to it. see you out in the water, mate. There'll be plenty of fishing <laughs> for you to do. Tony at Hope Valley, a boating experience in weather, mate? Oh, hi guys. Um, it was Port Lincoln, and it was actually on a charter boat. It was uh, I remember the boat was thirty four foot long, so a decent size. Uh, we headed out. Um, it was actually pretty rough heading out, um, but uh, and we were on the way to a place called Dangerous Reef. Um, we never made it because the weather got <laughs> so rough. We just couldn't go on any further. Turned around, um, and on the way back, the sea was hitting us on the side. Oh no. Um, and it was, it was, it was. I don't get seasick, and I'm not. I've never been scared out in the boat. But I tell you what, my mate, the best mate, best mate, was sitting out in the back of the boat, leaning on one side, having a smoke. I reckon. Oh, and no. we warned him. We asked him to come in uh, because we were all uh, at our, you know, our, our concerns. Mm. Hey, yeah, no, I'm cool. I'm cool. <laughs> well, we, this one wave hit his side on. It actually. Him it did on not. One side of the boat, and he hit the other side, oh, and then he came crawling into the de into the cabin. Right, and that was the first thing. And then, the, you know what? The it, just as bad as that was when we tried to actually come in, and we tied up alongside this jetty. But the waves were just throwing us up and down that high. And what we had to do was uh, just judge the wave as it was uh, at its highest, and then we were close enough to jump onto the jetty. So you had to time it right. Oh, God. And had my wife and his wife as well, and I tell you what, they were not happy with us. Rough bloody weather tone. Did your mate come through with a with a tail between his legs when he came back into the cabin? Oh, mate, did he ever. He crawled in. <laughs> <laughs> Stuff him. You blokes told him anyway. Shandell at Salisbury Plains. It can't be that bad, can it? What's your fishing story? Oh, Nettie, it was an absolute disaster. So back in the day when we had the FABT here, the um, South Australian um, Brim Tournament, I teamed up with Hubby. Uh, we launched from St Hilda. We went to um, a little inlet with a small tidal system. We got onto the Brim big time. Fantastic. Hubby said uh, halfway through, we have to go, we have to go. You know, the tide's running, the tide's running. Yep. I'm out fishing him. We're pulling him in, pulling him <laughs> in. Have to go, have to go. No. He pulled rank. Too late. Oh, no. To absolutely 
stuck. I don't know if you know the cutting at St Kilda. Yep, yep. It was stuck there for seven hours, 43-plus degree heat. No. I've cracked the sads with him. Uh, we screamed at each other whose fault it was. <laughs> uh, by the time we got out, we got back to St Kilda. The gates were locked to the club. Uh, we had to call for help because it was that late in the day. We found out that we would have won the comp and we would have had um, oh, big brim as well. Oh, and we'll oh Sandell. That is a mare. Oh, no. <laughs> What's your hubby's name? Raymond. Are you still with Raymond or did, was that the end of it? Uh, we're still together, but we don't fish a lot together. <laughs> good, good. Oh, Raymond, you bugger. Oh, well done, Sandell. That's a cracking story. I do feel a bit bad for you, though. Corey at Woodcroft, these have been beauties. You can't beat them, can you, with a crappy boating experience? Well, I'll try. We're at Stansbury um, fishing out at the pole at the end of the spit there and having a fish and next minute we could see a front coming over and oh, it's only a little bit of a rain, like just a, a shower coming over. Well, stuck it out and next minute we couldn't see five foot in front of us so we sort of decided to pack up. I said to my mate, I said, uh, well, we better head in. He goes, as long as you got the pole behind you and we're heading straight in, that's where we're heading. Yep. So we, we took off. Turn around and within, I don't know, five, ten minutes, because we couldn't see five foot in front of us, I, I said to him, I said, how many poles do you reckon are out here? <laughs> and he goes, there's only one. I said, well, there's another one here. And so oh. we've obviously had turned around and headed oh, no. back to the pole. And if it wasn't for that, and it started to get a bit rough then, if it wasn't for that pole, we would have um, been out in the middle of the gulf in the middle of a storm in a 4.8 Bermuda aluminium runabout. So... We sort of, I then kept that pole sort of behind me and then we ended up, once we could actually see when it cleared, we ended up at Port Vincent and then we had to bash our way back through all oh, the rough no. weather back to Stansbury <laughs> um, and uh, and at that stage I had water lapping at my feet because oh, I didn't realise that I had a hole in the bottom of my boat and um, yeah, so we were pretty lucky to get back in that day, otherwise we would have probably sunk out in the middle of the Gulf. So. Hang on, Corey. So to be clear, old mate behind the wheel, you're on watch. He's done a full 180, has he? He's going the complete yeah, wrong way. We, How has that happened? <laughs> but we couldn't see five foot in front of us. So oh. we, you know what it's like when you're driving a boat, Ned. The slightest movement will put you off the course. You don't well, realise. Yeah, we didn't realise because we could only see basically from the end of the boat because this rain and fog came in. Oh, and right. yeah, all of a sudden... I'm sitting there, we've gone a bit and come back and there's a pole staring us in the face again. Oh, I've gone, what the God. hell's going on here? If that pole <laughs> wasn't there, we would have ended up in the middle of the gulf. Corey, that is an absolute mare. Oh, my goodness me. Patrick from Felix Stowe, have I got that right? Yes, you have, yes. How are you going? I'm going well, mate. What's happened? Have you Great. got stuck in some crappy weather? Uh, look, we, um, look, there were six mates. We would always go out fishing once a year in particular. Everybody took time off and we'd go out on a big fish. And this particular year, we were um, one of the mates uh, was friends with a guy who you remember back about 20, 25 years ago at um, Port Lincoln in the Bay. I used to have those rigged um, the uh, keeper rings. Unfortunately, Patrick, tuna. 25 years ago, I was three you years before even... I was born, so I don't <laughs> he, he remember that. Too. Listen, Sonny. <laughs> no, uh, no. So it would have been around about that time, and they had huge keeper rings and um, they had all the tuna and they mm. were feeding the tuna and growing them. And we've got given permission because one of my mates was good buddies with uh, one of the owners. Yep. And uh, to fish just outside the rings. And um, because you were getting and catching Tommy Ruffs that were around about a kilo and a bit. Oh, wow. Maybe 1,200 grams because they were eating everything the tuna was chopping up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, so we went out, and it was a, it was a really good day. Um, like, but within about an hour, an hour and a half, we're catching these huge bloody Tommies and uh, getting carried away. And all of a sudden, we're going, hang on, what's going on? It's starting to rock. It was going nuts. We're in a 15-foot flat-nosed aluminium punt. And we had life jackets, etc., that were in a box, of course, keeping dry. But all of a sudden, it started to swell and it was oh, picking no. up. And we looked at each other. And this was the first time in 20 years when we were always <laughs> fishing together, yep. we were going to die. We were not going to make it back. We, oh, were convi I was, we were so convinced that, I kid you not, everybody looked as white as a sheet. Oh, no. And we started to try and get back to, um, uh, to the jetties, etc., and I think we were about a kilometre away, 
And uh, we started, we were going about 20 feet and being pushed back another 20 feet. We were taking on water, and out of nowhere, this rope hits me in the back of the head. <laughs> and there was this tuna boat that was coming in. It did not. And he, they threw the rope to us. Oh. They got us on board, and it took about five or six minutes to get us on board. It was board that bad, it was Patrick. So rough. Wow. It was huge. Oh, my God. I kid you. Look, this is the... And I, May, may I drop dead right now? I was looking at my mates and I'm going, we're not going to see our wives ever again. Is that, is that yeah. the most scared you've ever been, do you reckon, Patrick? I have never in my entire life been as scared as that. And after that, I, I refused to go on a boat for quite a while. Oh, um, and we just, we just started doing land fishing. We decided to go to the Rocklands Reservoir and do some trout fishing instead. But... Um, if it wasn't for these guys in the tuna boat and they towed the boat back, they got us on board, dried us off, and uh, they said, you know, if we were, you know, uh, if it was another day, they wouldn't have been out there and we probably would have been lost. Oh, and it, it was the worst. I, I can't even describe how I felt. I, Patrick, I it feels like you're getting a little bit off your chest. Have you been bottling this up? <laughs> it's, good. it's good for you to get out, mate. Yeah, mate, this has been a long, long time. We <laughs> couldn't tell the girls fun. because they would never let us out. Oh, you poor bugger. Well, as you said, you're back into the trout fishing. You need to slowly work your way into some ocean fishing. Oh. Sammy, our listeners have had absolute mares. We've had to turn away about three of them who were on the line because we're at the end of the show, but they are some cracking stories. Oh, my goodness. I have to leave it to you as to which one deserves the prize for tonight. They were that good. I honestly, I mean, there's Patrick, Shandell and Steve. Like, those were mm. the three that stood out for me. I think Chantel, like the marriage breakdown was hilarious. Yep. Steve's story was a cracker and he's just he's retired. retired. Yep. It's got to be Steve, doesn't it? Massive day for Steve. Congratulations to Steve. Oh, there what you a go. good well man, done, Steve. Steve. We've got a cracking uh, combo for you at Adelaide Tackle World Metro. We'll throw in a couple of lures too for you, mate, and I hope that just gets the retirement fishing uh, swing beautifully for you. Absolutely brilliant. Now, we have 30 seconds, so I don't really have time for all your hotspots, so give us your best one. Do you have one best hotspot around yeah, SA to this week? Sammy, weekend? I never have. You know what I want to quickly say? Uh, Port Victoria, some big cuttlefish amongst the squid. Nice. And just speaking of the cuttlefish, at Wyella, have you seen my what they do there? and my auntie went and swam with the cuttlefish today. How, what, today of all today things. Today of all days. They we drove did not up speak there about that, did we? That's no, a coincidence. That is hilarious. So um, that's uh, that's something they did today. and they Recommend had to do? Or? Crazy weather, absolutely brilliant. Loved it. Snorkeled. Fantastic. Well, there you go. You can't They're catch massive. them, but you can see them. So we're not just a fishing no. show. We're everything boating, fishing, get cuttlefish, all of it. Just get into it. Absolutely love it. We'll get your tip again next week. We'll have to recycle it because it's time for us to disappear. we got to go. But we've got hot spots. We've got a Ned's tip. And next week, just before we do, yes. we've got Andrew Harris from Wreckfish SA. Yes. He's going to give us a comprehensive update as to what's going on with boat ramps, infrastructure, fish stocking programs, everything. So if you're keen about fishing and you're in SA, next week's going to be a cracking episode to tune into. Hey, Ned, congratulations on National Fishing Show <laughs> Day. We've had a cracker. Thanks so much for joining us. We've got the 7 o'clock news coming up very, very shortly. Enjoy your night. If you thought it was tricky to source a great end-of-financial-year deal on a new Volkswagen, think again. Mawson Lakes Volkswagen.